trading cycles in their natural phases. Every market type, whether it's super volatile, dead slow, somewhere in the middle, is going to change and shift. It's just a natural part of the markets, right? It, it's how they ebb and flow from day to day, week to week, year to year. You kind of get the idea. When you first start trading, this may not necessarily be obvious uh, because your exposure to the market hasn't been very long. You haven't been through some of these market cycles to really fully understand how they operate. There's nothing wrong with that. But the extremely important part to remember here is that you understand that it will change. And that's important because this is an unstoppable process and there's nothing you or I can do about it. It's just how the market works and how it operates. So then, of course, that leads us to the next question of, well, the strategy that you're using now, my strategy, your strategy, the neighbor's strategy, is it good enough to cover all? all of the different kinds of markets or is it just good in this market type and and even if you may not need it for months right you may not need to have a strategy or something to utilize for a different market type for a while these markets can cycle for a really long time but even though you may not need it for a while it's still a good idea to be sure that your trading strategy has the ability uh, to operate within all of the different types of market movements, whether it's trending or ranging or, or whatever it's doing. So that way you're prepared for any scenario. Now, for some folks, they use different strategies for different market types. And that's fine because if your strategy doesn't fit the current market context, what it's doing at the moment, then you don't trade that strategy and you utilize a second strategy uh, that you can shift for the current market sentiment and whatever it's doing now. Uh, now, along with shifting into different sentiments, there's usually some extra indication or some extra device to tell whether or not it is shifted from range to trend or from trend to range or if it's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Think moving average, exponential moving average, MACD, that kind of stuff. Um, the important thing here to remember if you're utilizing multiple strategies or one strategy that encompasses them all is that it can handle a diverse set of different types of market types. And as long as it can handle these general few, and you can go crazy and make the list as long as you want, but you should be all right if it can cover these. So obviously the first one, which is what the market spends its most, uh, the most of its time doing is ranges. Your strategy has to be able to trade in ranges because that's what the market's doing most of the time. Along with that, there are different types of ranges and being able to catalog those ranges, you don't have to do too crazy. Uh, but typically I like cataloging ranges where you have your standard range where the market's just going back and forth. And then you have your reversal ranges and reversal ranges are the ones that are making higher highs and lower lows over and over. You can call it a megaphone as well. That's the type of, uh, of reversal ranges where they're really extreme, but it's still a range. It just keeps going to the other end and the other end just keeps getting a little bit wider. Eventually it stops, um, but that's a reversal range. Then you also have all of the different kinds of trends. Now, this is where you can go really crazy and, and start adding, you know, lists under lists under lists. Don't go nuts. Keep it simple. But as far as a trend goes, you got your standard trend, right? Your, your normal up trend. They never look like that. Obviously it wiggles back and forth, but your typical 45 degree angled trend, nothing crazy. Uh, that's the first type of trend, which normally the pullbacks are relatively medium, right? You're looking at like 40, 50, 60% pullbacks, nothing crazy, uh, nothing intense. It's just your standard trend. Then you have the weak trend or a trending range. And that's where the market is still trending. It's just barely doing it, right? It's just hanging on to the trend where it's still technically going up. <laughs> it's just doing it in a really weird, gross way. Uh, then you also have the aggressive trends. And those are the ones that you'll see every once in a while where it just never pulls back. It just, it looks like this. <laughs> it's just a straight up line. Inside of there, there might be those little bitty pullbacks. Uh, but the market is incredibly bullish or incredibly bearish, and it's just not coming back. That's an aggressive trend. And then you have your trend failures when the market is continuing up, but makes a lower high or maybe another lower high or maybe a trap or, or whatever your counter trend or trend failure type setups are. Uh, but it's got to encompass those major ones. You've got the ranges, reversal ranges, could just be ranges, and then a couple different types of trends to make sure that you're cataloging the appropriate market for your response to that market. 
Now, again, like I said, you can make that list way, way bigger. Um, but realistically, at its core, that's what it comes down to are, are those primary ones uh, that you can kind of base them on. That's what it should contain. Uh, now, now keep in mind, this isn't just for a zoomed in one minute chart or anything like that. Yeah, it can help there too, but it's, it's a way to discern the larger sentiment and, and see what it's doing there as well. You can zoom into the bigger time frame. We're looking at a daily. You can also zoom into a 15 minute. You can punch out to a 60 minute. It's a really flexible way to see what's going on on all of the different types of sentiments. If you're taking a with trend trade on a one minute chart, and it's at the bottom of a bull channel on a 15 minute chart, you've got a really good one to punch, right? You're stacking those odds. And that's kind of what it comes down to. We're just looking to stack the odds in our favor as best we can, and then let the market do whatever the market's gonna do after that. Now, when we're talking about different micro cycles or macro cycles or, or different cycles all over the place, like I said, these can extend all, all over. Uh, the important part is that while you are inside of these cycles, you understand that those cycles are occurring. As an example, I don't necessarily want to be an aggressive bull buying above bull bars when we're going sideways. It doesn't have to be because it's below the moving average, but we have all these stacked up candles. Why would I want to go long when it's not moving anywhere? It makes a lot more sense to try to get in long after the trend is, you know, has, has shown that it actually exists. Uh, so that's really the importance of kind of understanding what cycle you're in so that you approach it the right way. I hope your trading strategy has that area covered because it's extremely important and you need to be able to be flexible and adjust as the market is moving. And that can happen tens of times, hundreds of times a day, depending on the time frame that you're looking at. It can shift once a month. It can shift on an intraday time frame a couple times. It, it happens all over the place. So as always, like we always say, uh, stay safe out there, right? Keep those stops in play, shift with the right cycles, right? Let the winners run and that's gonna do it. So have a great trading day and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.